Hey guys, we're back. I'm back. I took it out for a test ride the other day and it moved and rolled on its own power just fine. Um, everything seems to be okay. I've got to look at this uh, chain tensioning uh, tension slash tensioner issue. I'm going to have to come up with something to guide the chain through its complete motion here. What I'm going to do today is going to take the shock loose and I'm going to put it up on some jack stands. I'm going to move the chain through its move the swing arm through its motion and see how it loosens and tense, tightens through that motion. And then we're gonna come up with a guide, which will probably be a roller type arrangement that'll mount underneath here, like I did on the on my um, big red bike. Um, something similar to that. So that's the chore for today, the main chore. It, um, I've also picked up some handlebar risers, get the bars up a little higher. They were seem, they seem, to, they seem to be a little low. I bought some grips. Um, these bars I'll use for now. They're probably not the, excuse me, not the final solution, but they came off a Chinese uh, 250 uh, dirt bike that I have at home sitting. So, anyways, got to do. There's lots more things to do. Got to come up with a solution for that. Um, I want to paint the frame, get that pretty. The engine's not done. It needs to be a little more. Uh, let's just say uh, healthy. A little more powerful so um we'll probably do an over the top exhaust excuse me an over over the top carburetor setup which i like to do to tuck everything in tight to keep it sticking out i did like i've mentioned before i did an exhaust that's tucked in nice and tight um which i like to do I don't like exhaust sticking out because it's a leg burner but um so let's uh, get her up on some jack stands and we'll uh i'll show you how the suspension moves through its through its motion and how it affects the chain tension. All right, so let's take a look at the travel of the rear wheel here, minus the shock, and how it, how it affects the chain tension. Right here where it's at, when you lift the wheel up, this is, this is probably extreme travel, it probably never travels that far. But like this, you have quite a bit of slack in the chain, which could cause it to jump. So, and down here, where I, where I test rode it at, is not bad. Of course, the chain's gonna stretch. This chain's not that old. Any chain you put on is gonna stretch. So, my idea is to put a roller, if you keep this tension about like where it's at, and you put a, you put a roller right here, it's gonna be a slight bit more tension. See, we have another issue here too, where the chain is rubbing the frame. So if you have something like here, in this position, it gets it up off the, it gets this up, up off the frame, and uh, it probably keeps a decent tension. It's to be determined whether I'm gonna have to have a spring-loaded tensioner, um, or just something fixed that keeps it in a, an, average, an average position. Uh, a large roller that actually acts as a guide too to kind of keep it keep it on path this way. I did that on my uh, bike I call a Big Red. We've got one right here that's fixed. Or right, actually, it's where the where the um, pivot point and the and the where, where the swing arm hinges to the frame, and it does double duty. It keeps a little bit of tension on it, and it mainly it guides the chain onto the sprocket. I see so many people on the internet and some of the big channels um, go out for this outdoor ride up in the, you know, in the mountains and such and they're riding their modified trail masters and and they have no chain tension on or no chain guide and the chain's popping off and it's like okay guys you need to take a couple minutes and get yourself a proper uh, chain tension on the thing but um at any rate so that's what we're going to do here because on the on the big red bike the chain Knock wood has never popped off. And all it is basically is a roller that sits right at that. It actually it attaches with the bolt that actually holds the swing arm on and with the arm that we made down and an actual, like a, uh, a plastic roller that I made on the lathe. And it works really well keeping that chain in line with the sprocket. And, uh, and, you, and you can kind of keep a little bit of a, uh, we'll say here, keep it, uh, 
an average tension, not too tight, not too loose, just right. So yeah, something, something that same idea in the same area here. We'll probably do the do the exact same routine. Might have to put a just for grins. I'll put a plastic piece of plastic and rivet it on here to act as a, a, a rub type arrangement. Um, but yeah, so that's uh that's the spring travel issue and the chain tensioning thing that I gotta come up come up with an answer for. I mean, before when this had a fixed frame. You didn't have to worry about that because you all your own you only had to do was adjust it here and get the wheel straight and everything would usually be good but it's surprising how many people have issues doing that also um that i find <laughs> it's almost as it's, it's almost as much of a problem as people in their torque converter um, installations and the belt alignment and why people wear belts out like crazy um anyways that's for another video um so yeah, that's that's what we're looking at here. And another thing I want to show you that I've that I've come up with, and it's not like it's an earth shattering thing or anything, but um, these things. I want to put some lights on this on this mini bike, and I this has a charging circuit in it, but if I modify this engine and put a real flywheel on it, that's going to go away. I won't have that anymore. So what I'm thinking is. I'm just gonna use a, a rechargeable battery. These are, or this one here is the Harbor Freight um, Bauer series batteries, because that's the tools that I have in the shop here. Um, no sense in buying different batteries if I've already got batteries. So I just bought this, this adapter on eBay, and this thing um, looks like it's 3D printed, and it already has the holes mounted, uh, um, machined into, or printed into it to mount the thing. And we use this for lighting, um, both a headlight and a small tail light in the back. And um, yeah, and maybe even a USB port. So, uh, so I can do some charging if I need to. Like if you're out riding around on a trail or something. Or you need to have something else that plugs into the USB. Um, but anyways, yeah, so that's a couple of things that are going on. Um, I've got to get some springs for the, for the foot pegs. That seems, that's a little uh, harder than you would think it would be to get the correct ones if you're gonna buy them. Cause I didn't, these, don't, they just, these did not come with springs. So, and I gotta get the proper pins instead of these bolts that are just dropped in there. Um, uh, the other day I made exhaust for it. I, when I took it out for the ride, it worked just fine. I gotta wrap the, wrap the pipe. Um, like I said, now that I've got the frame welded, um, I can go ahead and get the, get things painted need to make a mount for the fender here. I think I'm going to leave this like it is where the, where the shock goes through the through the fender like that. Uh, and then add a little extra rubber down here to keep mud off the off the engine. Aside from that, and then work on the engine. I haven't decided what I'm going to find. The final idea on the engine quite yet. Um, I'm going to modify the, the Tillerson or start with something else i was thinking about using a building like a wildcat engine um but i have this one here and i can throw a cam in it and a flywheel and, and a rod and some other stuff and uh some other mods and probably get what i what i need out of it for this particular one here it might be a um since i have it no sense in a buying a whole complete another engine i also have a two uh, a predator 212 sitting in a box next door so um that's an option too, but I just didn't know if I wanted to do that or go to a 224 or a 230 or, you know, it goes on and on and on. The more you look, the deeper you get into the whole thing. And it's like a, you fall down that, down that, with that rabbit hole, as they say. And uh, it gets bigger and better and more expensive in the whole nine yards. But anyways, um, so that's where we're at with this. Uh, I've got to make this roller and then we'll, uh, we'll start uh, getting it together for a, a final, uh, Another ride, another testing session here. Coming up pretty shortly here. Hey, I just wanted to add a couple of other things um, to the end of the that um, swing arm travel little video I did there. I picked up one of these 30 something dollar uh, flywheels. This was like $34, the aluminum ones. It's supposed to be rated at 10,000 RPMs. I'm gonna try it out. Cause I, you know, I'm a, I, typically I buy a PVL flywheel because 
I don't care about it being, um, you know, billet. Uh, 17,000 rated PVL is just fine. Um, this things are, these are supposed to be rated at 10,000. Um, honestly, is that engine and bike ever going to reach 10,000 RPMs on an off-road? No, it's not going to. So, figured I'd give this thing a shot, see how it works. I also picked up a Torquezilla uh, driven or driver torque converter from OMB Warehouse. Um, that's definitely a needed improvement. Um, anytime you're putting any kind of uh, modifications to your engines, you definitely need to pick up a better uh, driver. The driver, the driver pulley, so it takes more uh, takes more of the horsepower and put us to use put us put its to use to use better. Um, so yeah, so these are two things I'm going to be adding to that. Like I said, I'll probably end up with a rod and and um, heavier valve springs and some other mods too. So um, that's next on the list of things to do amongst some other stuff to this thing. So. If you like this kind of stuff, like, share, subscribe, and we will talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching, and like I said, hit the likes and the subscribes uh, button. It don't cost no money, folks. See ya.